before the birth of light, there was darkness. Jesus, you people had an entire two-hour movie to establish this universe, and you're still opening films with expositional narration? Also, before there was light, there was darkness on blank screen cliché. Such evil was possible through the power of the ether. The ether will now be the new Tesseract. Without it, the Dark Elves fell. L-O-T-R, Envy. Bury it deep. Somewhere no one will ever find it. Bury it next to that parallax guy. Just another day in Disney Realm. Perhaps next time we should start with the big one. Was that an option? This f***er just came out of the smoke. He basically out of nowhere. That dude was rocking off somewhere in the woods and only came out when things calmed down. Tesseract, terrible weapon for Hydra minions, also serves as great Bifrost bridge repair kit. You'd be better served by what lies in front of you. Yeah, no sh I mean, Jane Foster's Jane Foster, but Sif is... I mean, she's a hot chick who knows how to fight and wears sexy metal outfits. Is there a comparison here? Thor returns from multiple battles and immediately bathes. Only his upper half. Another! Yeah, alcoholism is hilarious. Especially while a kid sits on your lap. Rebound guy is absolute opposite of dreamy true love, and he's played by Chris O'Dowd cliche. How did none of these orphans outside ever run into this portal? And if the portal decided to work just now, then we have a sin of plot convenience. I'm sure the movie will later explain how there happened to be a coincidental rift in space-time in London for Jane to fall through that landed her exactly where the dangerous ether was being imprisoned, but I'll go ahead out on a limb now and say that that explanation will be f***ing stupid. So this qualifies as burying something? Thor clearly enters the archway in this shot, but then in the next shot he enters it again. Despite being knocked out in another realm, Jane magically transports back to Earth without finding anything that would bring her back. Jane! The cops who have been called to find Jane are apparently not interested in any capacity to ask her questions or see if she's okay when she appears out of nowhere. You said you were coming back. I know, I know, but the Bifrost was destroyed. Well, let me take that back. The Bifrost was destroyed, but in the first movie we found out that you didn't really need it to travel between realms anyway, because I came down here during all that stuff that happened in the Avengers because Odin used some dark energy, whatever the f*** that means. But the point is, I had no time to give you even a courtesy phone call, even during that bullshit shawarma scene. Then we use the Tesseract power to rebuild the bridge. Jeez, it just explodes my brain. This is private property and you're trespassing. These are the most lackadaisical cops in history. They just let Jane and Darcy run around out of view when they intended to arrest them. She does not belong here in Asgard any more than a goat belongs at a banquet table. Don't some cultures have banquets where the goat would be the main course? No, I, I would not. Touch her. Then Thor proceeds to touch her without a problem. And by the way, I know some of you out there are going to say, well, that's because the ether knows when the person touching her is threatening and when they're not. And that's bullshit, because why would the ether even care as long as it gets to stay in the body? Someone just grabbing her shouldn't be a big deal. But the movie says it is, and now Thor can just touch her whenever he feels like it. Convenience! Dark elves reigned absolute and unchallenged. Couldn't you have just included this shit with the big expositional opening? Do we really need two separate history lessons about the Aether and the Dark Elves in this one movie? We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you Prometheus. That's racist. This is a clever plan the Dark Elves are hatching, to have this cursed dude get captured and Trojan horse into the Asgard prison, but how did the Dark Elves know there was a war going on? They've been sleeping for thousands of years, and all of a sudden they know for a fact that Asgard is fighting to keep the Nine Realms in order? Why can't Heimdall see that this is a brand new person he's never seen before? In fact, why can't he see all those Dark Elves that awakened earlier? He can see trillions of souls in the realms aligning, but when a species long thought dead reappear, he goes blind? He's not my father! Not my father, cliche. Okay, so now I'm having Anakin and Padma love story flashbacks from Attack of the Clones. With every 5,000 years, the worlds align perfectly, and we call this the Convergence. During this time, the borders between worlds become blurred. It's possible you found one of these points. Is it? Because I thought the Convergence hadn't actually happened yet. Thor himself acknowledged this to Heimdall. It approaches, doesn't it? And the Dark Elves talked about it as a future event. So, it hasn't happened yet, and therefore Jane should not have found that portal. Also, I told you the explanation was going to be bullshit. My father doesn't know everything. Don't let him hear you say that. How the f*** did you hear him say that all the way back there? He was using his quiet, I just kissed you voice, too. Asgard doesn't inspect prisoners for weapons or recently opened wounds before checking them into prison. Did they not see the Dark Knight? I suppose this asshole's gonna start saying his stomach hurts now, right? So the Dark Elves are using Killian's extremists, then? Is Marvel so dried up creatively that they can't think of any mysterious deadly superpowers besides red burning flesh? I need you to do everything I ask. No questions. Yes, ma'am. Movie steals dialogue straight from my Natalie Portman fanfiction without crediting me. What purpose does it serve that the ship becomes visible when it's touched? Heimdall's sword can just tear this magic ship apart? Also, a ship has a video game weak spot. Why was there even one invisible ship leading the charge before? You just wanted to have a cool action scene with Heimdall, didn't you? We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you the battle for Naboo. 
seems like this could have been done sooner, but oh well. The ship actually drops its trajectory to hit the force field. How the mother did he know to come here? I guarantee you it wasn't that bullshit with Loki who told him to take the stairs to the left. You might want to take the stairs to the left. And even if taking the stairs to the left directed him here, he had no idea before he came down that there was a force field surrounding the castle. So how would he know that destroying this thing would in any way be worth his time? Heimdall's sword can f*** up a ship pretty quick, but all the columns in Asgard's castle do no damage to a ship at all. This great hall somehow remains standing even after all the support columns are wiped out by the crashing alien ship. Wait, Malekith was on that ship that Kamikaze crashed into the great hall? That was pretty f***ing stupid, given what we've seen lasers and Heimdall's sword do to these ships earlier. Sure, we get a cool villain entrance moment, but the actual plan took logic and threw it out the window. Thanks, Odin. You came just in time. We were here a second ago and the Dark Elves were kicking all the asses. Now it looks like everyone's dead for no reason. Who are you? Yeah, a doctor, who is that? Okay, so she's a hologram, so can her real physical self, wherever it is, see everything that's going on? Is she controlling herself with a joystick or connect or something? Complete with a heads-up display, or is Frigia's illusion so strong that it, it pretends to move around and look worried and Where is the ether? You're drawn to it, remember? The f*** do you need a verbal answer for? So this ship knew that these guys were going to get knocked off this very balcony to be waiting for them? F***ing come on. Okay, sure, it disappeared, but the hammer's still headed in that direction, right? As we saw with Heimdall earlier, these invisible ships still have mass and can be destroyed. And seriously? All this magic and they can't solve one sword stab in the back. If this had been Thor or Odin, they would have had some sort of elixir or chant or moon dew to bring them back to life. Spirit dust. F*** me. We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you Tangled. We don't see who the person is talking to because it's probably an empty room or not the expected audience cliche. At some point we pass from honoring the Marvel creator into territory where we're just humoring a senile old man who actually kills suspension of disbelief in every single Marvel movie. Right? I mean, I think we're already there, but maybe that's just me. A terrible bad guy conveniently needs some R&R &R so that the rest of the plot has time to happen before the big finale. My king, we are all but defenseless. Well, I'm sure Iron Man, Hulk, and all those other Avenger dudes could handle it. I mean, have you thought about giving them a call? Malekith will come to us. Yes, and he will destroy us. He will? I am still confused as to how much power these Dark Elves have. Between all the ass-kicking Asgardians, Odin's staff and Thor's hammer, plus the mysterious fate of all the other Dark Elves who were kicking ass and then were suddenly dead, I don't think they pose much of a challenge, really. Plus, the Tesseract can kill or fix anything, so... Astrophysicist Dr. Eric Selvig. Honestly, they didn't even need to rehash Dr. Selvig streaking at Stonehenge. We already saw this earlier in the movie, so Darcy should have been able to figure out that he was in the psych ward, and we maybe could have just cut straight to her trying to get him out. The Bifrost is closed by your father's orders. No one is to come or to go. Well, that worked so well in the last movie. I cannot overrule my king's wishes. Not even for you. I'm not asking you to. All right, Thor has a plan that won't get Heimdall in trouble. Treason, my lord. Mine. Jesus. I mean, what a fucking liar Thor is. What I'm about to ask of you is treason of the highest order. Also, this is the exact same scenario from the first movie that got Thor banned to Earth in the first place. He went somewhere he wasn't supposed to go to fight a guy he'd been told not to fight after his father had ordered the Bifrost closed. You're not even trying anymore! I sure am glad Sif turned around for no reason at all so that we can see who one of the cloaked people is. Malekov knew the ether was here. He can sense its power. Except for when the plot called for him not to sense the ether and he reached for a f***ing illusion. This is the movie's way of saying we could have put the Avengers in this movie, we just didn't. Oh, and f*** you. Costume's a bit much. Also, why did Thor and Loki keep their exact voice no matter who they changed into until Loki turned into Captain America? What? How the f*** did they not hear all this commotion in an empty large hallway? Man, now this is a love triangle I'd like to be the hypotenuse in. I mean, it's a eunuch system, you know that, right? Sure, let's just get on the alien ship, power it up, and fly away. Stop whacking! Alright, now that we've randomly powered it up, let's become experts at flying in the next five seconds. I really don't think there were any columns left to destroy after the first time, but the movie ensures that there are because destruction. No one chasing Thor sees bodies flying out of the ship. Nice trick, but you were flying that thing wildly all over the place, so how did this secret ship keep up with all that madness? You have to know the altitude, the speed, and the exact distance the secret ship has to be behind the Dark Elf ship in order to catch anyone. Damn, there's not even anyone in this ship anymore, and they can't shoot it down with a hail of sci-fi lasers. Really? Only one ship? And if Thor and crew were so easily detected after they jumped off the Dark Elf ship, then why did they even bother going through flying that ship in the first place? Attacking ship decides to stop shooting while Fandral does this. Again, I don't know how you do this. The ship was behind you. 
Now it just happens to be in perfect rope swinging distance, and not one asshole sees this coming for some reason. Also, if this ship can barely make it through the tunnel, then why did Loki never object to flying on the Dark Elf ship? He didn't know the plan, Thor tricked him. Never once did he say, hey man, this big ass ship, this ship won't make it through the secret pathway. This plan will not work unless you get me on a smaller ship. This can't be a trick at all. We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you Star Trek Into Darkness. And does Loki's secret pathway only come here? Are there other realms that you can enter through that passage in the mountains, or just this one? Because, I mean, what a stroke of luck that the one secret passage in the entire kingdom can come to the exact spot Thor needed to take Jane. You'll have to sign for your father's belongings. Brilliant plan! Just say you're someone's kid and break a guy out of a psych ward. It's happening. Wow, they broke you out of the mental hospital just in time, then. It's sooner than I calculated. Thor 2 borrows the scientist's problems estimating time thing from 2012. See, the birds were just waiting for the actors to get on their marks before reappearing. What the hell was that? Darcy forgets that she saw this same phenomenon a couple days ago. We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you Looper. Oh, come on. We've seen these things work, remember? They did not have some sort of artificial delay in sending people to their doom. Invisibility is totally necessary right now. There's Thor's invincible hammer completely waffling again on how powerful it is. None of this would have happened if I hadn't found the ether. Then Malekith would have only possessed it that much sooner. How would he have possessed it sooner? Oh my god, this is amazing. Okay, great. The planets have aligned, cell phones from Earth can call the Dark Realm, but... Shit, man. You're in a motherfucking cave. The next thing you'll tell me is that they found Spock in this cave. Even Convenience is angry at this kind of plot convenience. Why would the portal take them here? Shouldn't it be in that stairway where the kids were throwing all the shit down in it? Also, why did anything they throw down into that thing ever come back? If it went into the cave, there doesn't appear to be any other portal it could have fallen into to come back. Unless it boomeranged back into the portal it came from, but then it shouldn't have come out of the sky, but the portal at the bottom of the stairs. They didn't tow this thing out of here? They towed that huge truck that was on its side, but the station wagon of the girl who flew out of Earth at Thor, let's just keep that shit here. Forgive me, my liege. Okay, so we know this is Loki posing as a soldier, so how did he get back to Asgard? Can he fly so fast that he made it through the tunnel? And if he used his nebulous dark magic, then why does he ever need to use the secret passageway to come and go from Asgard? Malekith is going to fire the ether at a spot where all the nine worlds are connecting. Good thing the weapon she had inside her told her all about the plan of the bad guy who was merely planning to use the weapon. All the great constructions. The Mayans, the Chinese, the Egyptians. And then left us a map. A map that can be deciphered entirely in the United Kingdom. These are all coordinates taking us here. The lines Selby drew are all arbitrary. I mean, I could take all these points and make the lines pass through somewhere else if I wanted to. And wouldn't this obsessed doctor have figured this out already? Here. Greenwich. Phew. That's only a short drive from where we are now. Sure dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> Library Nazi. Super powerful ether that has no equal does a good job knocking Thor down, but that's about it. These devices were made to detect anomalies, not cause them. Are you... Are you fucking kidding me with that shit? Sure, this unpredictable convergence can be harnessed to transport assholes anywhere you need them to go. All you need is a thing, and a few other things. Man of Steelitis. Portals just happen to be anywhere, everywhere, and nowhere all at once. This would be fun if there was any actual logic to it. Now they just show up at the ice giant place after going back and forth between Earth and the Dark World the entire time. We interrupt this superhero movie to bring you Harry Potter. I mean, technically speaking, wouldn't the crisis here that Thor is facing be more important than the one Iron Man faced in Iron Man 3? Shouldn't Iron Man be here helping Thor? I mean, if Killian wins, he just has a bunch of super soldiers and robots, but he hasn't started a war yet, and he doesn't threaten to delete the entire universe as Malekith does. Priority-wise, the Avengers are all out of whack. Bullshit overload. So Malekith fell on his face and went boom, and that's supposed to give me satisfaction? Can't he just get up and keep using the ether to be a dick? Isn't the ether still out there and dangerous now? Did any thought go into this script after the first draft? I guess Odin's dead now? What a battle that must have been. Oh well, we didn't need to see it, I guess. And credit scene introduces another bullshit artifact that we're gonna have to worry about in future movies and will have vague but extreme power. One down, five to go. Oh shit, there's six of these fucking things? And this guy's collecting them? Damn it! Also, he's had a plan to get these Infinity Stones, and the first one he captures is willingly given to him. He's been sitting around hoping someone would give him one so he could start looking for the others? What the fuck? Damn you, Avengers! Now there has to be two bullshit scenes at the end of every Marvel movie. But she will not survive the amount of energy surging within her. Hey, 
have a cave troll. They look like big, good, strong hands, don't they? We outfitted our fastest ship. Using red matter, I would create a black hole, which would absorb the exploding star. I was en route when the unthinkable happened. The supernova destroyed Romulus. But the power of the ring could not be undone. So you managed to get your shirt off. <laughs>